Alrighty guys, welcome, welcome one and all to Lock and Load Publishing's Nation at War Digital Edition. This is your host ID Jester and yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is like a no-brainer uh, when I was going through my Steam uh, sale the other day and I came across Nations at War and it's now in alpha on the Steam store. So it was a no-brainer for me to pick up because uh, Lock and Load Publishing, everything they do is spot on, a number one, excellent. They do a wonderful job on everything they produce. So uh, without hesitation, I picked up Nations at War Digital, of course, uh, with all the expansion packs and everything. But just keep in mind, guys, this is still an early access. So there might be some bugs or there might be... Uh, some features not working or anything like that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But Lock and Load Publishing, one of my, you know, if you're a war gamer, you're probably familiar with them. But if you're not a war gamer and you're just interested in great tactical combat systems, Lock and Load Publishing, you can't, you can't go wrong. They have excellent systems. Their systems are designed to be able to take a variety of different uh, scenarios and different eras and combine them and just like their uh, lock and load tactical digital version they do the same thing with nations at war series now i never really got into nations at war I'm more of a platoon level guy or a squad level guy nations at war is more of a platoon level thing uh, but uh, it's always something I was interested in because it's just, you know, one level out, zoomed up, you know, from a squad level to a platoon level. And uh, it is a really good system and has a lot of really good things with it. So we're going to, uh, I was going to try and go through maybe a little tutorial scenario or, you know, kind of talk to you guys and show you a little bit about it. Um, hang on, I got to adjust my screen over here. There we go. Um... But I figured, you know, probably be easier just to go through the tutorial scenario so you guys can actually uh, read and see what happens uh, as we play. So I'm uh, really looking forward to checking this out, learning more about this game system. There are really um, some, uh, some interesting things with the system. And uh, it's it's one of those things that uh, I played a I played a practice scenario and really got my butt handed to me. So obviously I need to learn a little bit more. So I thought, well, I'll just run through the tutorial, and it would be a great opportunity to show everyone Nations at War Digital. So hey, Mad Dog, what's going on? Hey, Glenn, how you guys doing? If you guys don't own Nations at War Digital, Steam has got their summer sale going on right now. This is a no-brainer, man. No-brainer to pick this up. Lock and load. Everything they do is awesome, especially with the, the new ownership there. And the, the guy is wonderful, cares about his customers, takes care of his customers, supports his customers. And really, uh, the company's become one of my all-time favorite, of, if not my favorite right now, uh, with everything they've done. So let's go through the tutorial together and uh, check it out and uh, learn how to play. So uh, we're going to be taking control of a German Aufgebot Af 4 formation. It shouldn't take more than 20 minutes, sure. Yes, sir. Well, we're going to try this out and give it a look. Um, like I said, I, I played the tutorial scenario. And then I tried to just pick up a regular scenario and play it. And literally, I think half of my half of my guys were wiped out after like one turn. So again, this is just alpha. So there might be some features missing. Uh, there might be some bugs. Uh, just keep that in mind. This is not a final product. Um, they just have released it for us so that we can uh, get early access and give them some feedback and let them know uh, what's going on with it. But for right now, this, uh, first of all, looks amazing. Holy crap, this looks really good. So no bridge, no bridge too far in this tutorial. We'll learn the basics of Nations of War. First, a quick rundown on the icon bar in the top right side of the screen. You got your menu. 
You got your manual, you got your zoom, and you got your auto camera. The zoom option is an alternative in case using the mouse wheel is not convenient. Oh, that's kind of nice. Uh, before we get into the thick of it, scroll this panel down and let's go to the controls briefly. All right. In Nations Reward Digital, everything can be controlled with a mouse. But there are some things that the keyboard will also do. The game will handle all the dice rolling and calculations for you. You can pan the camera around using the WASD keys or the arrow keys. So right there, right there in that sentence, um, any... <laughs> I'm left-handed, as you know, if you've been on my channel for a long time, and one of my bugaboos with all these games that are released is they always want the customers to use the WASD keys for everything instead of the arrow keys. Being left-handed, my mouse is in my left hand, my keyboard is in my right hand, and for me to use the WASD keys is not comfortable at all. So being able to use the arrow keys without having to go in and remap everything is wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Companies out there finally understand there's more than just right-handed people out there. It's one of my big bugaboos when I look at games. In fact, I bought a game. Uh, what was it called? It was called the Jurassic Park. Um, oh, what the hell is it called? I bought a game on Steam called... It's the Jurassic Park um, where you build the park and... Uh, I can't remember what the exact title is. Well, anyways, you can't... You physically cannot use the arrow keys to move the camera around. And I tried to... I, tr I, I basically went to Steam and said I want to... Um, I want to refund this because I can't use the arrow keys to zoom the camera around, and they wouldn't give me they wouldn't give me a refund because they said I played too many too much time on it or whatever. But oh my god, I hate to I hate to go on about just some stupid arrow keys, but seriously, not everyone is right-handed, and using WASD keys is not comfortable. I if you're a left-hander like me out there, right? How many times have you bought a game, you got to go in and remap all your keys because everything's set up for somebody on right-handed. Anyways, we can use the arrow keys. Oh, Nelly. Love it. You can also use the mouse wheel. All right, so you just uh, click and hold your uh, scroll button down. Right. You can also go to the edge of the maps to scroll around. Beautiful. All right, zoom in and out. We use the, oh, yeah, look at that. We can zoom way in on these guys. Nice. Look at that. There's another thing. That's another one of my bugaboos. This, I, I tell you why I love this, and I love lock and load publishing, okay? All right. The, the first thing is just because of the arrow keys, yes? All right. But how many times in a war game have you zoomed in and, like, this is as zoomed in as you can get? Right? Because they don't want you to zoom in too close and see their crappy counters and their crappy maps and everything else. So you can start like this and then you can zoom in until you're like that. Look at this. We can zoom all the way down in and we can see everything and still have excellent, beautiful quality. We can actually read these buttons. We can actually see what they are. Ah, it's another one of my bugaboos with war games is, oh, yes, we have a zoom feature, and they let you zoom in, like, you know, from way out here to, like, here. Look at this. We can zoom all the way in. Isn't that beautiful? Good Lord. I love it. All right, continue. Stop yakking. Game progression. At the start of the game, both players set their forces up on the keyboard. This step has been skipped for the tutorial. Every scenario lasts a number of turns. Oops. Uh, where are we? Uh, look at the turn panel in the top left. Number of markers are used in the turn progression. These are pulled in random order from a figurative cup. You can see its contents at the bottom of the panel. However, the cursor over the counter is to enlarge. When the counter has been pulled from the cup, it has become transparent. You can read all about that in Chapter 2.12 of the manual. For now, we'll go over the two most important things. Formation markers. Every scenario features multiple formations of platoons, each having a marker in the cup. When this type of marker is pulled, this formation is active. So you can see in this scenario, 
It looks like everyone, uh, the Americans are all in the same formation. And it looks like the same thing for the Germans. All right. Uh, let's see, where were we? For, and enter marker. When the last enter marker is pulled, the, enter, the turn ends and all markers are returned into the cup. Uh, you can use fate points, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's, uh, that's enough. Preposition for now. Let's see some explosions. All right. So basically, what that just showed is, is the German marker was pulled out of the cup. So basically, what happens is, if you have multiple different formations and the enemies have multiple different formations, each one of them is going to have a headquarters. And inside, uh, if we click on this, you will see the headquarter here. As I can actually zoom in and see it. Look at that. So this headquarter unit is going to be located inside a, a cup or a container or whatever. And you're going to randomly pull out one. And that formation gets active. So you're never sure when you're going to, your turn is going to go. If it's going to be early. It's, this is not a like all the Germans get to move. And then all the Americans get to move. And then all the Germans get to move. And then all the Americans get to move. This is a... Uh, chit activation system which I think is really cool I think uh, being able to have some variety and not sure you know you can set up your units right so if we if uh, if we go first in this scenario and then we do all of our you know stuff with our formation and the American does all his stuff with his formation the next turn, the Americans might to get to go right again. So we don't know that. It's not going to be a us, them, us, them, us, them, back and forth. So you have to prepare both defensively and offensively, which is one of the things that's really cool about this system. All right, fire mission. Let's do it. All right, orders can be given to platoons. Their commanders may call on fire missions up to two times per turn. It can be smoke or indirect mortar fire. But the most devastating one is an artillery barrage. So this would be like off-board artillery coming in. You're going to use a, a headquarter unit to call it in. Look at the bottom left-hand corner to see your fire mission. Barrage. All right. Notice the green overlay on the map. These areas indicate the vision of the commander. So our commander is right here. So it shows you in green what he can see. Anything that he can't see, obviously, we can't try to bomb. Uh, barrage will only hit the target hex, but every hex around it as well. So it's best to hit an dense area of enemy platoons, even if the target hex itself is empty. The affected hexes are tinted red around your cursor. Uh, we want N5, which would be right there. So you can see if we land it there, we'll hit the unit in the middle, plus all of the adjacent hexes. Uh, so that looks like what we're going to do. All right, firing accuracy. Artillery fire marches have to roll for accuracy. On a roll of two to six, uh, fire mission will succeed. With a result of one, will cancel its effect. We roll the four, so the barrage is on the way. By the way, the bar underneath dice indicate the remaining time to observe or interact with them using fate points. So this little bar, this little arrow bar, will slowly shrink. So if you wanted to use your fate points to adjust it you're like oh i rolled a one but i want to re-roll that so uh let's do it let's watch the carnage sit back and watch the carnage all right the fire barrage mission you unleash has a firepower of three and a two hit of four well so firepower in this game is basically how many dice you're going to roll anytime you see firepower uh, which is a little bit different than a lot of other war games so your firepower is how many dice and it's always a six-sided dice so we're going to roll three six-sided dice and our two hit number is four which means if we roll that number or higher it will be a hit all right, uh, so you can see on our barrage here, we rolled a six, a four, and a two. You can see these are kind of colored in pink or red or whatever, showing that this is a hit, this is a hit. Uh, two hits are scored. However, the terrain, because they're in a city, gives the infantry platoon a chance to mitigate some of the damage. 
A defensive city bonus for soft targets is two. So they're going to roll two defensive dice. Soft targets have a save number of five. So save number is basically your chance to avoid damage. So if they would roll, say, a 5-5, five, five, then they would have mitigated our two, two, two hits. If they would have rolled, say, a 3-5, then they would have mitigated one of our hits. But in this case, they rolled a 1-3, which means they, need, they didn't negate any of our hits. So they're going to take it right on the chin as this lands right on top of their heads. And when you, uh, the first one that... Um, the first that, that you do it against the unit disrupts it. The second one will reduce it or damage it. And the third one would damage it again, which would reduce it and make it fatal. So let's see what happens here. So we disrupted and reduced the unit. And then there was nothing in that hex. Ooh, another good roll. Once again, we roll two successful hits. Same terrain. So the enemy gets to avoid one hit. They rolled a three and a five. So one hit is ignored, so they only become disrupted. Disrupted status has a chance to recover when the formation activates. But reduction is final, except for in a spare, uh, rare special case. So once you, so the best thing you can do is like two damage against an enemy, because you want to get them reduced. Disruption is always good, but they can always uh, rally from disruption and uh, get back into full working order. But once they've taken damage and they've uh, been reduced, they can't ever recuperate that, which is really good. Disrupted! And then a blank hex, and then a blank hex, and then we're gonna go after their... Uh, they have no defensive dice here. Uh, but there are two platoons in this hex, which means the damage will be split among them. So, so we're going to disrupt them, disrupt them, and that's a blank hex. So, there's a headquarter in this hex. Any damage done in a hex will risk reducing or destroying the headquarter in it. An extra die is rolled to check for this. And a result of one, it will be damaged. If a platoon is uh, um, entirely eliminated, this roll receives a two-point penalty. So basically, out of one, two, or three, it'll damage the headquarters. Furthermore, if all units in the hex die, the headquarter will die with them as well without a roll. So if you can kill the unit the headquarters stacked with, then the headquarter will be eliminated. Headquarters are eliminated as usual. Headquarters that are eliminated are usually replaced Upon its formation being reactivated, but its return in a reduced status. This lucky headquarter has avoided reduction by rolling a three. So we didn't damage the headquarter, but still, that was a pretty good barrage. All right, command status. When a formation activates, its platoons may perform operations provided they are in command. Units in command of their formation headquarters is within its command range. So if we look at our headquarter unit, let's take a look at it. Zoom way in. So this little lightning bolt here down the bottom right, in, uh, bottom left hand corner. Where did I learn how to speak? Bottom left hand corner. This little lightning bolt tells you uh, its command range, which means a unit has to be within four hexes of this to be within its command range. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Units that are out of range will roll a morale check to be in command at the start of the next activation. If they fail the morale check, they will be out of command and may only perform opportunity fire. All our troops are in command right now, so let's get started with some operations. All right, yeah, so you can see, uh, if we just click back there. So our headquarters is here. So anything within four hexes. So one, two, three, four. One, uh, oh, it's actually got a, oh, it's got a nice little, uh, we can zoom out and you guys can see that. So that's his command range, so all the units in there uh, anywhere within that little um, gray border would be in command. So you could have a unit back here in the uh, the town that would still be in command. You could have <clears throat> someone up here in the tree. But if there was a unit down here in the tree, you can see that would not be in command. So it would have to make a uh, morale check to see if it starts, uh, if it um, uh, can activate. All right. 
Operations are carried out separately for each unit or stack of units, after which they become ops complete, which means they can't do anything else. So once you activate them, they're done. Platoons, oops, uh, platoons ready for operation have a slight green glow around their edge. So you can see this kind of a uh, little glow saying, these are the active units. All right, find uh, hex I3 containing your information headquarters with the Puma platoon, and let's use them to score an early knockout on the dangerous-looking MA-105 platoon in hex 06. To perform operations, first you must select the unit to operate it. Normally, a simple left click on a platoon would do the trick, but because we have two units in the stack, we have to expand it first. So we click on it, expand it out, and then we're going to click on the Puma to make this active. Like this and then we're going to go to perform operations wow this is so good in nations of war digital a complete plan of operations has been confirmed before the platoon will act on its instructions now we're in the planning view however the cursor over a hex will simulate a platoon in the hex you can check your attack range and line of sight if you were to move in the location which is super good so like if I'm like, oh, if I move here, what can I see? Who can see me? So you can see all the hexes that are grayed out. And you can see, oh, if I move here, the unit down here in the town can't see me and they can't shoot at me. So super cool. Uh, I just sight is shown from the hex from which you're pointing at. So yeah, we can see if we zoom out again. So you have a yellow border and you have a red border. So the yellow border is going to be their, uh, uh, I believe it's their uh, HE value. And the red border is their AP value. So depending on if it's a soft target or hard target. So we want to activate and shoot this guy right there. Let's see what this is. That's an M4. So we're going to click on this. And say that's what we want to shoot at. So that is our. We have basically what we're doing is we're setting up the what we're doing with the unit, and then we tell it to do it. If that makes sense to you guys. Uh, so you click on it. You say this is what I want to do. I want to move here, 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 and then I want to shoot at this guy. Or you can just say, hey, I want to just shoot at this guy, and. Um, and then you're ready to go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six hexes away. All right. So let's uh, let's tell it, yes, perform our operation. We've got it set, ready to go. All right, so let's take a look at our attacking dice. We rolled four dice. So if we zoom in again, you can see. So let's look at our unit here. There looks like a lot of information on this, but once you <clears throat> understand the basics, it's really simple, actually. So, uh, it's going to be your first number is going to be your range. The second number is your firepower, which, again, think of firepower as how many dice you're going to roll. And the third number is going to be your uh, target number. So in this case, we're going to roll two dice. We need five or higher. Two dice, five or higher. I mean, that's just the base. Of course, that can be adjusted. Uh, and then down at the bottom is against your soft targets, HE value. So be a range of three. Two dice, hit to five. Uh, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, I think, is the close combat value. So if you were to move into a hex with an enemy unit, uh, actually, uh, I can actually look at that, maybe. Um... Ah, getting a drink, sorry. Yeah, so the, uh, where are we? Uh, so this number down here is uh, basically your assault factors. And then, uh, so again, two dice, needing five to hit. And then this is your uh, movement, movement factors. And then up here in the top is going to be just for uh, armored units is going to be armor value. So in this case, his armor value to try and um, avoid a hit it would be one dice, and he needs a six on it. Uh, so that's basically how that's set up. So you can see with our four dice we rolled, 
Um, so, uh, look at our attack. We roll four dice, two from the Puma's AP Firepower, and a plus two from the HQ's Boost. Yeah, because we're stacked with the headquarters. Um, can I look at the headquarters? Yeah, not with this little menu up. So, uh, normally you get two dice, but because he's stacked with the headquarters, he gets a bonus of plus two. So he's going to roll four dice. And again, he needs... Um, normally he needs fives, but we talked about range here. His range is a four. You can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six hexes away. So when you're shooting at long range, I think that's explained here. Our target is six hexes away. Yet the Puma has an AP a range of four which means we're attacking at extended range. Platoons may attack at extended range uh, up to double their value by raising their two hit value by one. So instead of fives, we need a six. So you can see normally we would hit on fives, but because um, we have to shoot at long range, we have to bump this up by one. And so we're only gonna hit on sixes. Uh, attack in reduced range would have the opposite effect. To hit a value is reduced by one if the target is within less than or equal to half the attacker's range. So in this case, the Puma is a four. So if we're shooting at somebody one or two X's away, uh, we would get, uh, instead of fives, we would only need fours or higher. Units with underlying values may not benefit from reduced range and cannot fire in extended range at all. Our Puma has a two hit value of five, but the extended range makes it uh, effectively a six. Therefore, each roll has to be a six to square hit. As you can see from the red highlight, we're looking at one. So yeah, we rolled a two, a one, a five, and a six. So we got one hit on the vehicle. Now the vehicle gets three armor dice and he needs sixes to try and block that hit. Let's see if he can do it. Our opponent has rolled five dice, three for its armor, plus one for the city terrain bonus for hard targets, and one for being concealed. You can read more about concealment and terrain defensive bonuses in the manual, 5.1.2.1, and under section 13. The MA-105 same number is six, which means only a six will negate a hit. Tough luck, they managed to avoid one of our hits. We got unlucky, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> oh, operations. Hey, we got, holy cow, we got, uh, we got the king of war gaming himself in the chat. Whoa, wow. Rough swordsman war gamers in the house. Everyone say hello to him. It's been a long time. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Check out his wonderful channel. He does a wonderful job. I've been... This is, uh, you know, uh, trying to get back into wargaming. And um, I really want more time. I need to retire is what I need to do so I have more time for everything. So just not enough time to do everything I want to do. So I got to kind of spread everything out a little bit. Um, but Rough Swordsman Wargamer, awesome channel. If you're not a subscriber, go subscribe to him and, uh, check out his wonderful video videos. He does a great job. All right. Uh, before we see any action, let's talk about our objectives. Every scenario has a set of objectives for each player. You can see your list of objectives on the left side of the screen. And, um, yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing real good. But under the weather, the last couple of weeks, I've had this chest infection, and it's not COVID. Don't worry about that. It's just um, uh, I just I have this chest infection, which has really put a damper on things for me, and just not feeling good and all that. But I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. So, all right. So our objective button. Uh, if you wish, a detailed explanation about the scenario's exact mission, mission connections, click the mission button. Just be, so right here. Click this. So there's your mission briefing and all of your information and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you check out your mission because 
Nothing worse than playing and not knowing how to uh, win this scenario. All right. Now we've tried attacking. How about we get a little closer? We got a couple of half track units. So uh, let's try this unit in I five. Sure. We're gonna click on perform operation, and it's five movement points indicated by the number in the bottom center of the counter, right there. Uh, each type of train is different movement points to enter based upon the train the unit is coming from and whether it's a hard unit or soft unit. Roads are ideal for travel, especially during heavy snowfall. Though it's not snowing in this scenario, let's follow the road through J5 to K5. Okay. So there to there. Unit will simply blah, blah, blah. Half tracks are essentially transport vehicles for armored infantry. These, among some other units, may load and unload during operations to turn into another unit. In this case, unloading will give the unit a little more oomph to the following activation. So let's unload here in K5. Uh, so we're going to unload by clicking... Uh, just simply click on it. To unload a unit, simply click on it. Note that there are movement points. will change from 5 to 3, leaving us with no more movement points to spend for this unit. Alright, so this is, this is not where this unit is. This is just us saying this is what we want to do with the unit because the enemy might try to opportunity fire or anything like this. So now we're going to tell it, okay, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to set up with this unit. Now let's perform this. And now you will see the unit doing its little maneuver. Uh-oh, he's going to take a shot at it. Ah, uh, infertility fire's coming in. All right. So it has an AP of shot. Uh, again, if we look at this, range of four, one, two, three, four, five. So he's one hex out. So he's going to have to shoot at long range, which means he's going to roll two dice. And he's going to need sixes because of the long range. We rolled a three to three, so he's going to miss. All right, good for us. And then we finish our move. So if he would have waited till we moved there, then we would only have been one, two, three, four. But he's not sure where we were moving. He wanted to get his shot in there. All enemies are now either disrupted or Ops Week, giving us the freedom to reposition our other platoon risk-free. The enemy has no fate points to have the last laugh either. So you can see all of his units are either Ops Complete or Disrupted. If they're Disrupted or Ops Complete, you're not going to be able to do much. You've got to figure out what to do next for the time being. Do not perform any attacks, but try to focus on repositioning instead. With the objective in mind, it's not encouraged to leave units inactive with opportunity fire because you're on the offensive position. Yeah, so if we just tell these guys, oh, opportunity fire, well, these guys are all done. They're not going to be able to do anything, so that would just be a waste, right? So we want to move, get into good positions. All right, uh, you could try to rush your other Puma to the northern bridge with the other half track trailing it for support or move them into position southwards to take out the MA-105 during the next activation. Well, well, well. All right. So we're gonna, um, let's see what else this is. Um, these are merely suggestions, so do what you think is best and learn from your mistakes. Oh, chaotic hay fever, says Rough Swordsman Wargamer. Oh boy, that's no fun either. It's important to note that no more than two platoons may be in a hex at any given time except for headquarters. So if your units are affected options if they are densely packed perform operations with your two ready units and remember no attacking for now overwatch and unloading is okay all right so what are we 
going to do here? We're going to try and take, obviously, this bridge, this bridge, and this bridge. <coughs> hmm. But remember, we don't want to go too far from our headquarters. Right? If we look at our headquarters again. I'm wondering if we maybe bring some guys up here. All right, so we're gonna perform an operation. He's gonna move here, 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 and here. All right, and so he'll now activate it. I'd like to get in some cover, to be honest. One, two, three, four, yeah, hmm. All right, we're going to, one, two, three, four. I think we're going to bring these guys around to the north as well. One, two. Uh, damn, we don't have any cover, do we? we don't, there's no cover there except for the city right there. Um, do you want to put these guys in the same hex? Probably not. Let's put them there. He's still within four of our headquarters. All right. And I'm actually going to leave him in the truck. I'm going to leave him in the truck. All right. Press the finish activation button now. And let's see what happens. All right. All uh, right. Finish activation. Oh, they get to go. They get to go. So enemy formation active. The two 16th infantry marker has been pulled from the cup. And now its formation is now active. Here's a quick reminder of the formation activation phases. Check command, then rally, then fire missions, and operations. All headquarter units are, all enemy units are in range of their headquarters, so that's skipped. It's about to see some morale checks. So let's see if they can rally. Oh, looks like he's going to rally. Disrupted units roll a morale check at the start of their formation activation. The sum of the two dice have to be less than or equal to the headquarters morale value. That's just going to be uh, up in the uh, up in the top right hand corner. Is there a morale value? So for us, if we rolled seven or less, we would rally. Uh, headquarters in a Hex will subtract their leadership from the roll as well. So the leadership value is this little number over here in the top left hand corner. So you would if we needed the unit in this hex with our headquarter, um, he would get a, a bonus or two. Subtract two from the dice. Platoons that roll higher than the morale value will remain disrupted and may not attack, but they are able to move as long as they're either out of enemy line of sight or moving away from them. All right, so he's going to rally. Oh, that one didn't rally. That's good. That rallied, and that rallied. Final words. The enemies have no mission fire, so they're about to perform their operations. There are a few things worth mentioning before we continue. It's possible to move and fire with your units during operations. Attack must always, attacks must always be the first or the last action, and your move points are cut in half. Assault and overrums is another form of combat you may try to move into a hex with enemies in it. It depends on separate assault factors and two hit values shown in the lower right hand corner of the counters. Lastly, two units of the same formation in a hex may plan their operation together for stacked operations. It's identical to regular operation planning, but you get to control two units step by step. It's possible to split the stack during operations, but remember you cannot abandon a headquarter. Once you've reached the end of the tutorial, hopefully you got a firm grasp. Sure, we've got a firm grasp of how we're gonna die. Yeah, I don't know why it had us move this guy down here so everyone can just shoot at it. That doesn't make any sense. All right, new turn, turn number two. Oh, they get to go first. He's gonna try and rally, but he failed again. That's good. Ah, he's trying to move. So now we have a chance to opportunity fire. Who's moving? This guy here? AT gun? Uh, if we opportunity fire, then we won't be able to do anything on our turn.
Um, hmm. Hmm. All right, we're gonna take a shot. Ah, oh, we missed. Or no, that was its attack. Sorry. And now we got to shoot back, and oh, we missed too. Damn. Oh, so it moved away. Okay. All right. Now it's our activation. Now we're talking. All right. I'm going to move both of these guys. Uh, oh, hang on a second. Um, cancel, cancel, cancel. He's got a headquarters, infantry, and he's got that AT gun. Damn. Which rolls three dice and hits on four or higher. Wow. Huh. Okay, well. Damn, do we take a shot? Uh, one thing I'm wondering is, is there a button? Oh, I see you can, okay, that zooms. Oh, you got the manual as well. That's cool. Oh, so you can make the mes messages bigger, small, if you like that, which is nice. Uh, objectives. Okay, so you can... So we have five turns to claim. We can't be lollygagging. It gives us a little bit more... There's our mission briefing. Okay. And so these are all the chits that are in the cup. You got an intern and intern, the Americans and the Germans. So there's four chits. They pulled his chit out, and now they pulled our chit. Okay. Well, let's see if we can do better than we did last time where we got, like, totally murdered. If we move here, this, this AT gun will be able to shoot us. I'm wondering. I'm going to select perform operations. All right, so you can see the units that he can see. We're going to perform a ranged attack. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, cancel, 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 wait a second. Whoa, 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 cowboy. So this is good because you can see the headquarter units there. Then his infantry unit's already ops complete, which means this guy can't do anything. He can't opportunity fire, he can't move, he can't fire, he can't do anything. And then the 18 gun is actually still disrupted. It never rallied. So that is going to be good. So we can actually flank these guys around from the top. Bring these guys in and try to capture this bridge. And then we got these buildings here. I wonder, can we... This guy will opportunity fire. Because he's not op complete. But he only has a range of two. So what I'm thinking is bringing this guy... Or it's only got three moving points. One, two... One. If we bring it here, this guy will opportunity fire at a range of two. He'll have one dice and hit on a five. This guy, oh, that's because he's been reduced. This guy is a range of two, two dice. All right, what's, 
in this hex. Is this a clear hex? There's no, there's no city in this hex. Well, they're just silly. They're they're just silly. Look at that. There's nothing there to help them. Now this guy. Uh, oh, he's in. I think he's in a city hex. All right, I think we're going to try to bring this guy around and assault into that hex. We're going to perform operation. We're going to we're going to move here. Then here. No! Not enough movement points. Assaulting with infantry requires plus 1. Ah, oh, you need an extra. Okay, uh let's cancel that then. So if we move there, eh, we're going to get shot by this guy. Huh. This is a tough decision. I know, I know, I should just do something, but you have to think tactically now. You got the, their most powerful units over here, which if we can come up here, right? We got all these buildings blocking him, which means he's going to have to come out. Although... One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can. He will get opportunity fire at us. But it will be at long range. Alright, so we are gonna. We're gonna try. One, two, three. Perform. Yep, I figured he was going to. Oh, he missed! Nice! He missed as well. Nice. So they are now ops complete as well. Hmm. So the only one he isn't shot with that's active is this guy right here. So we could move one, two, three, and then uh, probably one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. All right, let's I'm trying to think if this guy comes in here, here, and then here, and then unloads here. Well, we have enough moving points. We're going to try. We can go one, two, three, and then maybe uh, that might be worth trying. One, two, three, four, and that would be it. Okay, we're going to do that. Perform that operation. Oh, damn. I should have I should have switched out of truck mode, but that's okay. Now, did we get this victory point? What do we have to do? Mission... German hope to win. Capture any one bridge hex within the town. Any other result is an American. Capture any one bridge. Oh, so we need one bridge. But I don't know if that means we have to be standing on it. We're going to perform operation. Now, damn, I'm wondering if I shoot at this again. Now, I got, I got to move them. 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 All right, perform operation. We're going to move one, two, three, and then shoot at the AT gun. Perform the operation. One, two, three, shoot! Boom! One hit. 
which reduces it. And did the headquarters? No, the headquarters did not take damage. All right, so we are uh, all ops complete. They're, they're not all finished ops complete, which means this guy can actually move up. All right, uh, we will finish our activation, though. Let's see what they got. Turn three! Oh, they're going to rally. Oh, he rallied that unit. Damn. So somebody is moving here. All right, let's see who's moving in there. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Oh, and our headquarter. Damn. Our headquarter become disrupted there. Damn. Hell yeah, we need the opportunity to fire. Oh! That's two hits on it. Nice! So he moved up there. Alright, we rallied, which is good. Our headquarter is... Um, Reduce though, which gives us one dice instead of two dice. Infantry, infantry. We got our Puma, and we got this guy. And I think he is just going to shoot this AT gun. Um, he'd roll three dice with fours to hit, or he would roll two dice with fives to hit the range attack. I think we're going to try to overrun it. Perform the operation. All right, we took we took a hit because the counterattack, but we wiped that unit out, so he no longer has an AT gun. He no longer has an AT gun. Now we're gonna shoot. And we're gonna try for the infantry. Oh, nice! Oh, he defended one of them. But that disrupts him. Oh, and his headquarter was reduced. Nice. All right. Now, the other thing we can do is... Thinking about bringing this guy down over here. Here, here. So if they swarm us up here, you can always come out and get this bridge hex. Or, you know what, and even better yet, I can come all the way around. Although, I, yeah, I need to be careful because I have to stay within four, don't I? Damn, that's too bad. All right. We're going to switch into regular infantry, and then we're going to shoot at this infantry right there. Oh, nice! Oh, he blocked one again. Damn it. But we will reduce him. That will be... Oh, and the headquarters is dead! Oh, amazing! He will come back, though, but... Wow, that was amazing. I do have to worry about this M4 here. 
which is right adjacent to us, which I'm not happy about. He's got three defensive dice, plus he's in a town. We're going to try and shoot it, though. If now's our chance, or do we want to take care of the infantry? Hmm. If we, I think we're going to just rage attack. I've got a hit on it. And no defense. Wow, that's huge. That is huge attack there. Wow. Now, if we can get, if we can pull our chit before they get to go, then we have got the advantage. If they pull their chit first. Let's see. End turn, and yes, we get to go first. They do get to rally. Uh, no rally, so we stay disrupted. But they stay disrupted until after we go. We could move right up on them. Right up on them. We're going to, um, we're going to shoot this M4 again. Come on. Oh, we got a hit. Come on, miss. Oh, he defended it. Damn. 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 All right, uh, we're gonna activate these guys. What is our, um, can't, hang on, cancel. What's our range on this? So three hexes, two dice. So if we actually move adjacent to it, we would get a bonus. All right. Move here, move here, and then shoot this guy, arrange this ult. Oh, only one hit. And no defense. That's good. Well, that's going to kill him because he was already disrupted. Now, I want to move this guy back where he can't get shot. Put him right in there. Who's gonna, what? Okay. Fine, fine, be that way, jerk face. And I'm wondering if I bring this guy back over here. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's just shoot. We can shoot it too. Let's go for this infantry. Oh, nice. We took it out. So he's got a broken infantry and an M4 left, and that is it. And here comes his headquarters. And he failed his rally, which is good. Oh, and he tried to assault us. And we counterattacked him. That was huge. Let's see what that message was. Hang on a second. 
Wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? Wait, wait, where did our turn go? Oh, did we lose our headquarters? Wait a minute. Did we lose our headquarters? No, we didn't lose our headquarters. What the hell happened there? I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the hell happened. Are these ops complete and disrupted? Well, this sounds to me like a perfect opportunity to do a ranged attack and try to kill him. Nope. Missed him. Alright, how about you? Can you hit him? You can, oh no, you can only shoot at a range of one. Okay, um, we're going to move you here and then here. And then, can you attack? Nope, not enough movement points. All right. Now this infantry. We're going we're gonna to surround this M4, so no matter what he does... Oh, can I? Nope, not, all right, perform operation, that's fine. He's disrupted, damn. I could move my headquarters in with the other Puma. If I bring in the Puma in the headquarters, Range attack. Ah! Really? Three missed attacks. Alright. He gets to go first. Command check. He rolled a 12. He can't rally. So he can't knock us off the bridge. That's for sure. And now we got him surrounded. Look at this. All right, we're going to take this infantry, shoot at him. Oh, double sixes. Wow. Double sixes. Boom. Game over. The Axis victory. The Allies were wiped out. Whoa. Nene. Awesome. Great. That was that was really cool. I was a little confused on that one. He came up and there was a big melee assault, I guess is what they call it in this game. Assault. Attackers got wiped out. Defenders. I thought we resisted him, but then our headquarters disappeared for a turn or something. I'm, again, this is just early access, so maybe there was a bug. Maybe I'm just not sure exactly what happened. That's more of a possibility, but... That is a look at Nations at War Digital. Digital. So, um, I didn't want to show you guys the other scenario I was playing because it is so cool. We're just going to uh, play as the Americans. Uh, I just wanted to show you the snow effect, which I thought was really cool. Look at the snow effect. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? That is awesome. I love that. So here comes the Germans. But um, yeah, I, I'm not going to play this scenario. But I loaded this one up and I'm like, oh my god, it's freaking snowing. That is so good. Wow. Look at that. So our head corner unit we could put back there. One, two, three, four hexes. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Might be looking at, worth looking at. Can we put the headquarter back here? 
Oh, uh, can we put, oh, we cannot put it back there. We can only put it, oh, that's kind of crappy. Anyways, yeah, I just thought, wow, this snow looks so good. It looks like your units are getting snowed on. I just was like, wow, that is an awesome. I just wanted to show you guys that. So um, we can go back to uh, stop the session. Yeah. All right. So that's the Nash, uh, Nations at War Digital Lock and Load Publishing. Number one in my heart. Um, I highly recommend to get all their stuff on Steam and to check out their store for their awesome board game Um Great quality, loving care that's put into these products is awesome and uh, really need to spend more time with the lock and load stuff on my channel here and uh, you know I can't say enough good things about the company, the owner and uh, just everyone that I know that's dealt with them, the customer service, the support, everything has been spot on awesome. Uh, which is great to hear. And then, you know, like I talked about, you know, the stupid arrow keys. I mean, yeah, I made a big deal about just being able to move a, a mouse or move a, a map with an arrow key. But there are triple A games out there. Triple A games. And I will tell you the name of the game. So uh, it is, let me bring up my Steam list. It is, um, what the hell is it called? It was called, oh, you know what? I think I uninstalled it. Um, Because I literally cannot, couldn't play it because, uh, anyways, I don't remember what it was called, but it was some Jurassic Park where you build a, I don't remember the name, but literally you couldn't even use the arrow keys to move the, move the, um, to move the, uh, um, the camera. I'm like, I cannot play this game if I can't use my arrow keys to move a camera. Oh, it's just crazy, but yeah, Nations Award Digital Lock and Load Publishing. Check it out, guys, on Steam. They got the summer sale going on right now. If you buy, uh, you can see um, the core game comes with a couple scenarios, and then they have um, White, Star White Star Rising 1 and White Star Rising 2, and it gives you quite a few scenarios, as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or whatever scenarios, quite a few scenarios in there. And it's very reasonable priced. I think it's a, a steal of a deal. I uh, highly recommend um, the quality and and uh, time and effort that, you know, you can just see what the maps look like. Being able to zoom in and actually see the counters as beautiful as they are. I uh, really, really love this. So I'm looking forward. And of course, the Lock and Low Tactical Digital game is just as good so if you like this check out the lock and load digital as well and that will have your squad base game as well so hopefully we'll um we'll be able to do this thanks to rough swordsman war gamer extraordinaire be sure to check out his channel thanks for him for coming by philip mad dog glenn everyone check it out nations at war digital lock and load publishing Check them out, please. For the love of God, do yourself if you're a war gamer and you're interested in war games and you like good quality stuff. Lock and load publishing. All right, guys. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.